everyone, Mango7Roll here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Dragalia Lost. And we're actually going to talk a little bit today about why I quit, the new changes coming up, and my reasons, my top 10 reasons for why this game kind of fell off the radar for me and why I will not be playing it anymore. I kind of owe it to you guys to kind of answer these questions because you guys keep asking me. And uh, I think my reasons are pretty good. I'm not sure, maybe not, but it's what I feel and why I decided to not play anymore. So number one on the list, in no particular order, is availability. Uh, couldn't get the game in Canada. It's as simple as that. Um, pretty easy in quotes fix. I'm not sure what the problem was, but so many other gacha games are able to get their stuff from elsewhere to Canada. No problem. But here, um, I couldn't play it. If I wanted to play it, I had to log into another um, app store and log out and do all these shenanigans, download the game, log back into my old account. It was just atrocious and I did not enjoy doing it. And it got to the point where I would have to do it on like three different devices and it was just frustrating and one of those things that should have been fixed way earlier than it was. So number two on the list, just like number one um, ties in together, is emulators. Emulators were the savior of this game for me. They kept the um, availability a non-existent factor because I didn't care anymore because I was playing on my computer. It kept streaming amazing because it was so much more um, pleasant to play with you guys on an emulator. It was so much more visually appealing. It was better for videos. It was better for everything. It also made it so I could play on a controller, which makes this game infinitely better. Like actual, literal, infinitely better of a game on a controller versus using your fingers. You don't have to put your stupid finger over the screen so you can't see anything. You don't have to do anything ridiculous like that. You just play on a controller and it feels like an actual game. And the fact that it is not available to play on like the Switch or something like that just infuriates me because I know there's a reason for them not to do it. And I know they're just blocking us from doing it for no reason whatsoever. Um, because maybe it's coming out on Switch in the future and they want us to buy that. I just, it just makes me mad that they took that from me because once you have controllers and once you play with controllers, you can't take it away from us. It just makes the game so much worse. And yeah, those are kind of the two main factors, I think. Like, those are the ones that actually pushed me over the edge where I couldn't play anymore because they just wouldn't let me, if that makes sense. But let's get over some gameplay style things now and, um talk about why those stop me too. Number three is the all expected worm prints. And there are so much wrong with worm prints and yes I know they're fixed in quotes now, but it's too late. You can't you can't have something so obviously wrong for seven months or a year. I don't know how long the game's been out. And then be like, hey guys, I, I understand you don't like worm prints. Since we're not making as much money we're gonna fix them. And we listen to the community, yay, you can't do that. It doesn't work like that for me. It's not going to trick me. It's too late. And, you know, I'm okay with worm prints in a game. I'm okay with uh, craft essences, artifacts, and stuff like that. But I'm not okay with uh, a couple things. One of them is when they break your pity rate. And another is when they are freaking useless and um, don't really offer any sort of impact on your game. Like, it literally did not matter which artifact I ever had on except for the event ones. And I honestly never paid attention to which ones I was using. I don't even know what half of them do because it literally just didn't matter. So the part that pushed me over the edge were some of the limited banners where they would put like two just completely useless limited worm prints on these banners. Like so bad that they just, you, you could never even fathom a place you would use them. And not only did they take the place of like a limited character or dragon you could have gotten, but they also broke your pity rate and it was just it was just one of those things like I, I I cannot believe you've done this like I actually actually like can't believe you've done this and it's just so obviously like money grabbing style of thing for me that it just really really hit me the wrong way um so I could talk forever about what I hate about worm prints and why I think worm prints are terrible but we're gonna go on to the next one and the next one is another reason that summoning felt bad, and that's duplicates. Duplicates are just terrible in this game. Um, in other games, if you get duplicates, you can make your character marginally stronger, you can give them plus one, you can give them an imprint, you can do so many different things, but here, it's just a little bit of Eldwater that basically does nothing. So it got to the point where even as like a free-to-play player, 
you would not get anything from your three stars and four stars. It'd just be a little bit of Eldwater. You wouldn't even care what you summoned because it was all just trash. And I say trash instead of fodder because of a lot of other games, when you summon something you don't need, it's still fodder, it's still good, it still helps you um, work towards something in the future. But here, the duplicates were basically nothing. Um, I think that's changing now, but again, uh, a little too late for me. Next up is artificial barriers to entry. And this is for stuff like the high dragons. This isn't for everybody in the game. But it just felt like um, they tried to justify some of their choices, maybe in Worm Prince or something like that, by um, making certain characters not have that 100% chance to resist, so you would have to use a Worm Print to get them up there. Um, by giving not people not enough HP, by making it so the boss just does an AoE right at the start of the battle that clears out anybody who doesn't hit that artificial barrier. Um, this type of thing made it so it was less skill. You still needed some skill to do these uh, battles, but the barrier to entry to get in was just so high that you couldn't do it with a lot of different characters, and were oftentimes forced to um, summon those dragons or buy those power packs uh, to really get in and compete. And that kind of frustrated me a little bit because it made it so it was much harder to do as free-to-play. I'm not saying free-to-play people couldn't do everything because they absolutely can. I even showed that but it just made it so it was so much harder and less fun because you couldn't have a choice of who you used. You were stuck in certain people. You were stuck using certain dragons. It just wasn't as fun. And the other part is um, with weapons like this, these were just so, so, so atrocious, but you had to make them. Um, just really bad itemization as well. Uh, when it came to these artificial barriers because I would love to not use this but I wanted to use Sanoa and the only way for me to do that was to build this stupid weapon that just is terrible. Um, anyways, let's go to the next one which is repetitive gameplay and um, I'm not sure if it's still repetitive at this point. It looks like it. I, I haven't played the game actively for a bit but it definitely looks like it's exactly the same as before where they just alternate between events here and there. Um, it also looks like they've added void battles which I'm not sure what they are. Um, I haven't really heard much about them, but if they're fun, let me know. Um, but in general, the gameplay was super, super stagnant. Um, no real new fun. You knew exactly what was coming. Every event was identical. Um, all the farming in between events was identical. Everything 100% was the same. Whereas you look at something like um, Epic 7 and you can see that they have the same sort of things. They have the same events, they have a lot of the same stuff, and you do a lot of the same stuff all day. But it feels slightly better to me over there because there's random items at the end. Here you do something and you get the exact same stuff basically every time. There's no rare drops, there's nothing like that. At least there wasn't when I was playing. So that makes the repetitive gameplay much worse. If you're going to have repetitive gameplay, you really need to have something to support that gameplay to make it exciting. Um, whether that's like rare spawns, rare drops, whether it's rewards for doing it X amount of times, you need to make that repetitive gameplay much, much, much better. Next up is kind of one that just kind of bothered me specifically. A lot of people aren't going to experience this, but um, the next one is infinite bugs. And I had so many bugs dealing with High Micro Sormer, um, and the amount of time I spent wiping because of it is just infuriating. Like. I lost literal days of gameplay and, and kills because uh, they would just bug out and we'd die and next patch they would fix it and then they'd break something else. The next patch they would fix it and they'd bring back the old bug. So it just made my experience of the end game so much less fun. Um, it also made it harder to do melee a lot of times. It also kind of pigeonholed again what you had to use. Uh, this is kind of just a personal thing. I, I'm sure a lot of people didn't experience this, but just with the timing when I was actually working on HMS and stuff like that, um, it really, really, really hurt my experience and enjoyment of the game. And the next one is kind of petty of me, I guess, maybe, uh, but it's no daily summon. Like, how do you not have a daily summon in a gacha game? How do you charge me for a daily summon? That's just ridiculous to me. Like, you seriously have to charge me 30 Diamantium for a daily summon, like that is just so, so ridiculous. And, and it doesn't make sense to me. Because if you give a gacha game a daily summon, people are gonna log in every day and they're gonna do that daily summon. And then they might get a five star and then they might use start using that five star and then they might start playing again. 
But without a daily summon, I'm not even going to log in um, when a game is not really interesting to me at the time. So it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, how do you go about charging us for a daily summon? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, not sure what to say about that, to be honest. But it really, really bugged me that they had to give or had to charge us Diamantium for the daily summon. Next up um, is just the difficulty of the game. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this game was when we were carrying people through the first raid. I had so much fun and it was a blast and you had to be like somewhat skilled. And then it got to the point where everything got slightly easier and easier and easier. And um, the game just got too easy at that point. And anything that was hard in quotes was artificially hard like we talked about like the um, Heimager Sormer uh, initial hit and everything like that. There was nothing that was actually skill related, I guess, which is weird because this feels like a game that would be related to skill a lot of times. So that's just something personally that bothered me. I'm not sure if that bothers the um, average amount of people, but I just know that I had more fun when things were slightly harder. And the final one, the final one for me is pay to win packs to this and this is obviously a contested subject with me because i've released videos about this in the past and a lot of people disagree with me that these are pay to win packs but i really don't like um where are they here i really don't like these packs specifically the ones that really bothered me were the weapon unbinds um these were things you actually legitimately could not get in game until you bought these packs and you could buy them once a month and I got to the point where anybody who was buying these monthly had such an easier time, not even an easier time, but oftentimes like they could enter the dungeon and I couldn't without buying these packs. And that really frustrated me. Um, the Unbind Pack Dragons and Worm Prints were kind of okay to me um, because that's just kind of RNG. Like you could have bought summons and got more anyway. But weapons, you literally could not get them in game. Like, I could farm for 24 hours a day for like a month and not get that. So, that's just kind of like a nail in the coffin for me. Um, I know I might be somewhat hypocritical about this with stuff like um, Molagora and such. But this is so much difference because this kind of gated your content. Like, you had to buy these to participate in content, at least at the start of the game. And that really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, and I think it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Uh, so that's the main thing there, is just those weapon packs. The rest were okay, to be honest. Like, I'm okay with the worm print and dragons part. Just the weapon one really bothered me. I'm not sure if they fixed that yet or if it even matters anymore. But I know back at the start of the game, it absolutely did. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, I have some summons left. I'll be summoning whenever we get that Fire Emblem collab, because I, I like the character still. Uh, but I'm not sure what else to say, and I figured I owed it to you guys to kind of talk about the game and talk about why I'm no longer playing it. And keep in mind, I think this game um, was beautifully done. The music was great. The gameplay was great. But it was not long lasting for me. So uh, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always. I am sorry for hating on your game if you hate it or if you love this game. But um, I've got to be honest. So I, I got, I've got to do what I've got to do. So have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.